Long story short, traded is taken. Short story long, the movie is so much more than that. But the parallels between the two movies can't be denied, so I thought I would just get that out of the way. If you replace modern-day Paris with 1880s Kansas, Liam Neeson with Michael Paré from Streets of Fire and Eddie and the Cruisers, and substitute the word taken with traded, then you pretty much have the same movie. Paré plays Clay Travis, who is a retired gunslinger trying to live a peaceful life as a rancher with his wife Amelia, played by Constance Brenneman, their daughter Lily, played by Brittany Elizabeth Williams, and their young son Jake, played by Hunter Fisher. However, the family's life is turned upside down when Jake is bitten by a rattlesnake and succumbs to his injuries and dies. This sends Amelia into a deep depression, and Lily decides to leave home unannounced and pursue her dream of being a Harvey girl. So, a quick sidebar here. Harvey girls were one of the earliest forms of modern-day waitresses. Harvey girls worked for the Fred Harvey Company and the Harvey House, which were hotels and restaurants that were prevalent throughout the southwest United States during the late 1800s. Harvey girls got room and board for their services and were paid $18.50 a month. Check out Judy Garland's 1946 classic Harvey Girls for a more entertaining explanation. Now, back to the show. Clay follows his daughter's tracks to Wichita, Kansas and discovers that she has been taken to Dodge City against her will. In his pursuits, he comes across a variety of villains and characters, most notably a barkeep played by legendary Chris Christopherson from the Blade Trilogy, who offers some insightful advice to Clay. Country music star Trace Atkins convincingly plays a corrupt brothel owner, while Tom Sizemore from Saving Private Ryan fame plays the head bad guy, corralling girls from surrounding areas and selling and trading them as sexual slaves. There's even cameos by Quentin Aaron from The Blind Side and Martin Cove from Karate Kid and Cobra Kai fame. Now, if you're a fan of westerns and aren't looking for any in-depth, detailed storyline, then this fits the bill. The film is engaging enough to keep you invested in it, and fans of westerns will also be happy to know that the movie comes complete with all of the old cliches. In fact, what western movie isn't complete without a quick-draw shootout in the middle of town? The acting is done admirably by all major players involved. It was great to see Christopherson back at what he loves and, uh, and knows best. After all, he did play Billy the Kid in Billy the Kid and Pat Garrett. Though his role was small, it was powerful. Traced Atkins was a surprise because he's such a nice guy in real life, and the few times that I've seen him act, he often plays a gentleman. So this was a complete 180 for him, which worked really well. Tom Sizemore plays his usual tune, which works well for him. Being a bad guy is what his bread and butter was. And he's also typecast for that specific reason. Tom Sizemore was often looked at as a bad guy. His once promising career had been diminished by years of drug and alcohol abuse and far too many run-ins with the law. Michael Paré displays a formidable character that balances the characteristics of a gunslinger and a caring father quite well. He plays the character uh, as a typical tough guy, but does show flashes of vulnerability when it comes to his daughter. Even minor characters work well in this movie. Martin Cove is just the guy you love to hate. He's made a career out of being the bad guy. Cove plays an abusive stepfather to a lonely girl that ultimately gets what's coming to him. Of course, no Cove character is complete without a John Kreese-esque speech to let you know that he's in charge. The movie looks legit too, which is nice because there aren't too many modern day takes on Western movies these days. But shooting took place at locations at the Paramount Ranch and Big Sky Movie Ranch. For a movie that never got a huge theatrical release, it looks and feels big, budget even though it never was. Overall, the tone isn't as dark as Taken. I think that it's mostly in part because Taken is a modern day movie and we as the audience can relate ourselves to an on-screen character or presence. It's easier to relate to a kidnapped victim in Paris than a cowboy or Harvey girl of the Old West. That being said, the storyline itself isn't that modern and human trafficking and sexual slaves are nothing new to human history. The interesting thing about this movie is that had the movies been reversed upon their releases, I would still be writing the same review and Taken would be traded. <laughs>